So, the next few videos are gonna be a bit different. If you've watched my channel or followed me on social for long enough, you've probably realized that I don't really like making music lists. There's a whole host of reasons behind that, but that's not what we're here for. We can get into that some other day. We're here because I'm gonna make a list, kind of. We only end a decade once every 10 years, so when it comes round, it creates a time to reflect on the years we just experienced together. So I'm gonna use this opportunity to create a list. At these times, a lot of people like doing rankings of best albums of the decade or things like that, and that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do a, a kind of more personal, subjective list. It's gonna look at five artists who defined the 2010s in my mind. Seeing as the decade encompasses my entire adult life, the 2010s were kind of a big deal for me. They saw me graduate high school, graduate university, start a YouTube channel, have that YouTube channel become my job, move across the country, and get engaged. Naturally, I have some thoughts on the music that was the soundtrack to all of these events, and I would really like to share that with you. So over the next five videos, I'm going to discuss five artists and how I think they defined the last decade. This isn't necessarily to say they were the greatest artists of the decade, nor is it to say they were the only ones that were important. It's just a list of five artists that I thought really changed the world over the last 10 years. So here's the five artists in question. David Bowie, Taylor Swift, Kanye West, Beyonce, and Kendrick Lamar. Over the next five weeks, I'm going to release a video on each of these artists, explaining what I think they meant to the decade. If you want to contribute, I'd love to hear what artists define the 2010s in your mind. Honestly, I think it would be awesome to turn the comments sections into a collection of your guys' thoughts on the 10 years we just made it through. And if you want to chat more about it, you should join the Polyphonic Discord. I'll put a link for that down in the description. The series will kick off next week, but before I go, I wanted to update you with some other stuff going on. As you're probably aware of, a few months back, myself and a whole bunch of creators started our own video streaming platform called Nebula. Nebula is a place for us to create free from some of the struggles and restrictions of YouTube. You can sign up to Nebula for just three bucks a month, and all of that money goes directly to supporting independent creators and creating new original content. Speaking of which, a few months back, I launched my first Nebula original, Led Zeppelin's Epics. That series was an in-depth look at three of Zeppelin's most ambitious songs, Stairway to Heaven, Kashmir, and Achilles' Last Stand. I really enjoyed doing a deeper series like this, and so last month I launched my second Nebula original. This is a series that's been in the works in one form or another for a really long time for me, and it's something that a lot of people have requested, so I'm really, really excited that it's actually happening now. The series is called The Dark Side of the Moon Project, and it's a track-by-track -track analysis of Dark Side of the Moon. There's two episodes up on Nebula now, and new episodes are coming bi-weekly. I'll be releasing the series on YouTube throughout the new year, but if you want to get in on it early and show your support for my channel, you can check it out today at Nebula. If you're not sure you want to pay yet, that's fine, but there's a 7-day trial so you can give it a shot and see what I've got on there. And to those of you that already have Nebula, thank you, it means a lot to me that you've signed up to this service, and I hope you're enjoying it. And there's one more thing that I wanted to tell you guys about. I've started making art. Over October, I did my own spin on Inktober and released a bunch of digital artwork pieces on my Instagram. I've been really enjoying making this art, so I'm going to keep posting new art on my Instagram at Watch Polyphonic. This is pretty much completely unrelated to my YouTube channel, but it's a ton of fun, and I'm pretty proud of these visuals, so check them out if you like cool pictures, I guess? So that's basically it for this video, but before I go, I just want to thank you all so much. Your guys' support lets me do fun, weird things, and it really lets my channel keep growing. I especially want to thank my supporters on Patreon and those who have already signed up for Nebula. Working with music on YouTube is an endless uphill battle. I think it's really important to use clips of the music that I'm talking about in my videos, but that usually means that Sony Music Entertainment or Universal Music Group claim my ad revenue, even though my usage of these songs is pretty much the definition of fair use. Sometimes they even claim the song if they don't have the rights to it, like the public domain recording of The Entertainer that I used in my Scott Joplin video. 
So because of this, my AdSense revenue is pretty limited, which means those who support me on Patreon or Nebula really go a long way to helping keep the channel alive. And tune in next week to see why I decided to include a man born in 1947 in my list of artists that defined the 2010s. Thanks again, I guess. Bye. I'm really bad at sign-offs in these talking-type videos.